Well, it wouldn't be APS TV at the March meeting if I wasn't joined by uh, Ted Hodap, and, and I'm delighted to be joined by Ted right now. Ted, welcome. Thank you. Thanks again this year for uh, joining us here in sunny Boston. Sunny Boston, where the snow is falling and the sky is blue. <laughs> it is indeed. So, so tell us a little bit about the uh, Graduate Education uh, Network project. Sure. So for the last, I would say, about seven years, uh, the APS has been running a project called the APS Bridge Program. And the idea behind this program is to uh, increase the number of underrepresented racial and ethnic minorities who get sure. PhDs in physics. Um, and this project has just seen overwhelming success. And we have now 40 some departments which are uh, vying to basically attract these very capable uh, individuals into their graduate programs. And we now have about 170 individuals who are pursuing PhDs in physics, none of whom would have gotten a PhD before the project came along, the APS Bridge Program. So given that success and given a, a call for proposals that was given by the NSF on one of their big ideas called the Includes Network, we asked to see if we could replicate what we've been doing in the Bridge Program to other disciplines in the physical sciences. So we're working with the American Chemical Society, the American Astronomical Society, the American Geophysical Union, and the Materials Research Society to say, let's expand what we've been doing to their, to their departments and to their membership in that. So we just got started on that, and we're, uh, the ACS, the American Chemical Society, has now started their very first bridge sites, and we're very hopeful that this is actually going to uh, expand the opportunity throughout the physical sciences. It's great to hear that the bridge uh, program has been uh, so successful. Uh, how important is it to physics science more generally to be inclusive? There's a ton of women out there who are wonderful, capable, intelligent, and could be helping us solve these problems. And, and underrepresented minorities, they're just not as present as we'd like to see them. Right. And so part of what we, for the American Physical, physical Society, would like to see is can we open our doors to some extent and welcome the larger set of population and for these to help us solve these really difficult problems? It, it's, it's laudable to, to do that and to open the doors to, to do exactly as uh, you say. But once you've opened the doors, you've got to do more than just that. Haven't you? Absolutely, yeah. So we have to, we have to uh, develop and, and uh, cultivate a welcoming sort of attitude and understand the issues that are being faced by different groups. And so part of this is just a sensitivity to those issues. Part of that is learning about the issues that they face and thinking about that as we go forward. And so it's, it takes a kind of a proactive stance, especially for us sitting in the majority to think about, because this is not the problem of women or underrepresented minority, this is the problem of the majority. So we need to attack that from our perspective and our positions of power, really. Well, Ted, thanks ever so much indeed for uh, joining us and uh, best of luck with the new program and I'm sure we'll catch up uh, next year. Thank you. I hope so. Thank you. APS TV comes to you straight from the March meeting in Boston. Make sure to come back and explore all of our great content updated each day of the meeting.